All right, so this video is going to be a little bit different in the stuff I usually make, mostly because I'm completely unscripted right now. I'm basically just going to be rambling for like 20 minutes. So... The US Presidents! So many most iconic people in world history, and today, we're going to be ranking them. Why? I don't know. I just had these drawings of the presidents lying around, so I might as well put them to good use. Also, let's just get this out of the way first. I won't be ranking every single US President, because I will not be ranking the following four men. W. Bush, Obama, Trump, and Biden, okay? These four men are way too recent, and I don't want my comment section to turn into a political dumpster fire, okay? Also, if you guys like this kind of unscripted ranking content, I might do more of it in the future. Maybe I could do kings, sultans, emperors, you name it. Not dictators, though. I won't be doing one about dictators because I have something else planned for history's dictators. Wink, wink. But you're gonna have to wait to find out about that later this year. All right, let's begin. So, starting off with George Washington, we're already starting off with the best president. Everybody already knows this, alright? George Washington is probably the best president the United States ever had. The main thing that makes George Washington a great president is that he was the only president to never associate himself with any other political party. So, like, he appointed people to jobs not based on their political party, but based on their talents. Which, for the country overall, that's really good. And the other reason why he's great is that he limited his own power to make sure that no future president could be too powerful when judging by some of the idiots coming up. That was probably a good call, so yeah, S tier. John Adams, okay. Oh, Adams. All right, I love the founding fathers of the United States. I think they're all really cool people. But despite the fact that I like John Adams as a person, his presidency was a disaster, okay? XYZ affair, that was bad. The pseudo war with France, that was bad. The Alien and Sedition Acts, that was really, really, really bad. How authoritarian he was, that was bad. He's probably the most authoritarian president the United States ever had. Well, him and Lincoln, but Lincoln had the excuse that there was a war going on. So yeah, Adams, I love you, bud, but your presidency was terrible. D tier. Not F tier, but D. But then we go from a bad president to my favorite president, Thomas Jefferson, all right? I love Thomas Jefferson. He's just... He's just so cool, okay? He's the guy behind the most iconic document in American history, the Declaration of Independence, okay? I literally have a copy of this paper hanging right next to my office, okay? That's how much I like Jefferson. So how was his presidency though? Well, the main thing that he did was the Louisiana Purchase, uh, which was a really good decision. He got it for so cheap and it basically doubled the country's borders overnight. Uh, other than that, he's a redhead. I love redheads, if you can't tell. And the only real bad thing I can say about Jefferson is that he was a he was kind of a hypocrite because he hated the Bank of the United States, but when he needed money, he went to the Bank of the United States. So uh yeah. Still A tier. Highest of A tier. Okay, James Madison. This guy, okay, I like Madison. I think he's a very cool and very intelligent dude. Like, I would say he's like Voltaire levels of like philosophy. However, despite the fact that I really like him, the highlight of his presidency was the War of 1812, which was a war that went really badly. Like it was a massive stalemate. So despite the fact that he was a good president, his presidency was not the best time to be an American, so B tier. James Monroe, so the main reason why he's famous is for the Monroe Doctrine, which was uh, European powers couldn't have colonies in the New World anymore. And also he founded a colony in Africa called Liberia, uh, which was kind of a failure, but whatever. Um, so he had a more aggressive foreign policy, but he was really just a continuation of what Madison was doing, so B tier. John Quincy Adams, okay, this guy is the son of John Adams, and uh, he's just kind of forgettable. He's a funny dude, though. He liked to go skinny dipping in the Potomac River, and he had a pet alligator, so he's a cool dude, but he's just kind of a forgettable president, so C tier. All right, Andrew Jackson, this is where things start getting a little controversial. All right, Andrew Jackson is a pretty cool politician. He like dueled people in the White House lawn. He had this giant block of cheese. He threw this massive party in the White House that completely trashed the place. So yeah, cool dude. Um, the main good thing that he did as president was universal suffrage. Um, before this, only rich people could vote, but after that, anyone else could vote. Unless you're a woman. Or a slave. Or an Indian, but other than that, everyone else could vote. But speaking of Indians, the other reason why he's famous is for the Indian Removal Act, alright? That was really, really bad. Really bad. The closest thing the United States ever had to a straight-up genocide. However, I'm of the opinion that even if Jackson never became president, something similar to the Indian Removal Act was gonna happen anyways. It was just an inevitability. Now, did Jackson accelerate the process of removing the Indians? Absolutely, he did. I'm gonna give him A tier, though. Low A tier, because the Indian Removal Act does knock him down a lot. All right, now we have Martin Van Buren, another forgettable president. 
he's just a failed version of Jackson. He tried to continue Jackson's policies, but he wasn't Jackson. He wasn't a lovable melanomaniac, so he kind of failed, so C tier. Now we have a very quirky duel of presidents. We have William Henry Harrison and his vice president and successor, John Tyler. William Henry Harrison was president for 30 days. C tier. Next, John Tyler. Okay, this guy's an idiot, okay? Him and George Washington are the only presidents to not have a political party, but unlike George Washington that specifically did not want to associate with any political party, John Tyler didn't have a party because he got kicked out of his own party, the Whigs. Why? Because everything that he did supported the opponent party, the Republicans. Imagine being the leader of a, of a group, of a team, and all you do is support stuff the other team wants. What kind of idiot are you? Plus, fun fact, he's the only US president to not be honored in Washington because when he was old and crusty, he was part of the Confederate Congress. Which means that he's not just a bad president, but he's also a traitor. So yeah, D tier. Not F tier because he's not a horrible politician, however he was a stupid politician, so D tier. James K. Polk. This guy's kinda cool. He only had one term, yet he managed to annex Texas, go to war with Mexico, beat up Mexico in said war, annex like half their country, and bully the Hudson's Bay Company into giving him this territory, basically giving the United States its modern day borders. And then soon after he left office, he died. So yeah, doing so much in such a short amount of time, that's very impressive. A tier. All right, so now we have another duel of Whig presidents. Zachary Taylor, this guy was president for just a year because he died after eating some intoxicated cherries of milk. C tier. Next we have his vice president's successor, Millard Fillmore. Uh, this guy is okay, but he is the guy that signed the Compromise of 1850, which most historians agree is one of the leading causes of the American Civil War. But what was he supposed to do? C tier. So now we have another duel of quirky presidents. Uh, these two are probably some of the worst presidents in American history. We have Franklin Pierce and James Buchanan. Okay, so context for those who don't know anything about US history. During this time, the US was tearing itself apart over the issue of slavery. So they needed a strong leader to help the government not collapse in on itself. Instead, they got two, instead the government got two do-nothing presidents. First, they have Franklin Pierce who did nothing during Bleeding Kansas which was one of the most brutal events in American history, and he did nothing during John Brown's rebellion. So basically, when the country was in crisis, he did absolutely nothing, so F tier, but he's nothing compared to James Buchanan, who also did nothing when the country faced its biggest crisis in all of its history. When the southern states were leaving the Union, he did nothing! He didn't send troops, he didn't denounce the secession, he did nothing! He didn't even send an angry letter, okay? He did nothing as the country literally fell apart. So yeah, he goes into F tier too. However, after two garbage presidents, the US finally gets some competent leadership. Abraham Lincoln. I don't think I have to say anything here. Everybody already knows Lincoln is awesome, okay? Great wartime leader during the Civil War, led the Union towards victory against the Confederacy, brought the country back together after it was tearing itself apart, and the biggest event of his presidency, in my opinion, the Emancipation Proclamation, okay? Which ended slavery and brought freedom to millions of people, making the US finally truly the land of the free. So yeah, S tier. Unfortunately, he got shot by a mediocre actor and the country fell into the hands of his vice president, Andrew Jackson, who is another F tier president. All right, so the Civil War is over, the country is in ruins, and the country needs a strong leader to lead them through reconstruction through these hard times. Andrew is not that person, okay? <sighs> this guy, the country's government was split into two factions, okay? We have the, the Southern Democrats who were bitter about losing the Civil War, and we had the radical Republicans in the North who wanted to punish the South for daring to start this mess. How do you manage to do that? That's just impressive, honestly. So yeah, he goes into F tier for mucking up what Lincoln was doing. But now we go from a bad Lincoln successor to a good Lincoln successor. We have Ulysses S. Grant. This guy's really cool, okay? He was a great general during the Civil War, but could he actually be a good president? In my opinion, yeah, yeah, he was a good president. The main thing that I remember about him is that a lot of historical events happened during his presidency, mainly German unification. He sent a congratulation letter to Bismarck, by the way. And the other thing I remember about him is that he met up with a lot of other significant historical figures, mainly the King of Hawaii and Emperor Pedro of Brazil. However, his presidency did see a lot of corruption, like some of the worst corruption the country had ever seen thus far. And the Battle of Little Bighorn happened during his presidency. That was kind of a disaster. But other than that, I think that he's a very, he's a pretty good president. Not the best, but 
could be worse, so B tier. Ruffifer B Haze. This guy is just kind of forgettable. The main reason why he's remembered is actually that has nothing to do with the US, is that he signed the peace treaty between the Triple Alliance and Paraguay after the Paraguayan War, which is the reason why Paraguay still exists to this day and wasn't carved up by Brazil and Argentina. So he's a national hero in Paraguay. Imagine a US president being a national hero outside of the US. That's pretty funny. But then that forgettable president, C tier. Andrew Garfield, I feel bad for this guy. This guy was actually a really intelligent politician, really, really clever. And he would have been a pretty good president. Unfortunately, he was shot by a crazy person in a train station, so he never actually got to be president properly. C tier, poor guy. Chester B. Arthur, literally who? All right, I'm someone that knows a lot about US history. I have no idea who this guy is or anything that he did. He's probably the most forgettable US president. I don't know. C tier? I don't know. All right, Grover Cleveland. So Grover Cleveland is that one US president that gets memed on a lot, and I have no idea why. A lot of people really like Grover Cleveland as president. They would even put him in like top five best presidents of all time, which don't get me wrong. I do think he's a good president, just not like the best. He's definitely a little bit overrated. The main reason why he's famous is that he's, he's the only president to have two non-consecutive terms, which means that he was president, then he lost the election, and then he became president again, making him the 22nd and 24th president at the same time. But other than that, he was okay. He was pretty good. Except for the financial crisis, but that wasn't his fault. B tier. Alright, so now we have the guy that was president in between Cleveland's two presidencies, uh, Benjamin Harris. Literally who? I said that Arthur is the most forgettable president, but honestly, I'm starting to think Benjamin is the most forgettable president. I literally have no idea what he did, okay? Alright. This- what did he do as president? Oh, 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 I do remember. He did do one thing as president. Uh, he increased tariffs. Boo! D tier. Alright, William McKinley. Uh, just like Grover Cleveland, a lot of people like McKinley, but unlike Grover Cleveland that I can kind of understand why people like him, I, I do not like McKinley, okay? Alright, he's famous for two things. First, number one, the Spanish-American War. Now, was the Spanish-American War a success for the United States? Heck yeah, it was. It was a massive success. But it was also kind of a jerk move, alright? The main was not blown up by Spain. Let's put, let's, let's put it that way. So, this was an unjustified war. But it was a very successful war, so I'm gonna- So it was good for the United States, just kind of a jerk move. What was a jerk move and was not good for the United States, though, was the Filipino War. That was really bad, okay? There was no reason for the for them, for the US to annex the Philippines after the Spanish-American War, and just kind of dragged out a war to gain territory that wasn't even that beneficial in the first place. But the main reason why I don't like McKinley is that he was the guy for the robber barons. So like, the robber barons basically bribed the um, the Republican Party into picking him to be their nominee. What is a robber baron? It's um, it's a super rich business owner during the late 19th century that owned these massive monopolies and they were so rich that they could influence policy. And usually they influence policy to help their business. So, so not in the best interest of the overall population. Uh, so I don't like them. And he is pro those guys, so I don't like him either. D tier. Teddy Roosevelt is awesome! Yes, I know that's like the coldest take ever. Alright, Teddy Roosevelt is probably the coolest president. I know I say about that about every single president I like, but Teddy Roosevelt, I really do mean it, okay? People consider Teddy to be the first modern president. And I agree, okay? He was a man for the people. All those Robert Barons I was talking about a minute ago, he got rid of all of them, broke up their big companies, and made the market actually free for your average business owner. He also expanded national parks. I like nature. That's cool. He also had this really good foreign policy called carry a big stick, where basically it was just get in, get out, no long occupation, just go into the country or whatever, intervene, don't stick around for a long occupation, so just just leave. The biggest example of him doing this was in Panama. Colombia didn't want to hand over territory to the United States to build the Panama Canal. Okay, just give Panama its independence and boom! Panama Canal. And fun fact, he won a Nobel Peace Prize for signing the peace treaty between Japan and Russia during the Russo-Japanese War. So yeah, he gets S tier. Very cool president. William Howard Taft. This guy is just Teddy's failed successor. He's kind of forgettable. The, the only thing that he's memorable for is that uh, he fic. But other than uh, that, he's just kind of whatever. There is a new party, which it is difficult to carry to ride. Wilson! Wildrow Wilson. Oh, okay. Wildrow Wilson. 
is in my opinion the president that did the most damage to the modern United States. All right, I, I, I don't, don't like I don't like him. I don't like him mainly because of his foreign policy. Will Drosianism, however you pronounce that. This is bad. This is bad. This is basically it says spread democracy, which sounds like a noble cause, but in reality it just means that when the United States intervenes in another country's affairs, there's gonna be a long occupation. Um, to try to mold the country into a American style republic and most of the time it fails fails very hard and the United States decided to instead of going with Teddy's good foreign policy of Caribbean stick uh, most presidents decided to go for some reason with uh, Wilson's version of foreign policy which is bad it led to a lot of unnecessary bloodshed across the world that's really bad I know I'm getting a little political here I'm sorry but I, I just feel really strongly about this. And he also did this especially in Latin America. And as someone from that continent, I don't really like that all that much. Uh, what else? Oh, his acts during World War I were uh, really bad. They basically just spat on American democracy and freedom. Anyone who criticized the war could go to jail, or even worse, be drafted to go fight in Europe. That's... That's really bad, really authoritarian too. And also, uh, I subscribe to the idea that we should not treat historical figures by today's standards. We should treat them by the standards of back then. But even for back then standards, this guy was really racist, okay? He, he had the audacity to play a birth of a nation in the White House and dared to call it historically accurate. Dude. So yeah, I don't like Wilson. F tier. Warren G. Harding. So we go from another bad president to another bad president, although for completely different reasons. You see, Warren G. Harding is the definition of mid, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. F tier. Next, Calvin Coolidge. I like Calvin Coolidge, he's pretty cool. You see, his presidency was during the Roaring Twenties, so he had the genius idea of not intervening with the economy. Just let it grow naturally without any government intervention. Uh, and because of that, the country had probably one of its best decades. B tier. Okay, Herbert Hoover. Remember what I just said five seconds ago about Calvin Coolidge? Yeah, um, he tried the same thing, except the Wall Street died during his presidency, so the country's economy collapsed, and he didn't really do anything about it. He did pass one act, I forgot the name of it escapes me, but it was a really bad idea, and it spread the depression globally. So, well, I don't think he's a bad person. I just think that he was not ready for the stuff he had to deal with during his presidency. F tier. FDR. Oh, FDR. FDR is pretty cool. So, uh, I'm just gonna get this out of the way first of all. Uh, the New Deal did not end the Great Depression, but it did help. It did help a lot. And honestly, just the president actually doing something about the economy when it's doing badly, that's, that's a step in the right direction in my books. Uh, the main thing I really respect about FDR is that he seemed to be really in touch with common people. He had this, um, radio show, Fireside Chats, I think it was called, where he just talked to the people, telling them what he was gonna do. I know politicians do this all the time nowadays with ads, but back then, that was revolutionary. And also, of course, World War II. I'm not gonna give him credit for everything that the U.S. accomplished during World War II. However, he is the president, so he's the commander-in-chief of the U.S. Army, so I'm gonna give him a lot of the credit for World War II because the U.S. did amazing during World War II, okay? Island hopping, that was really good. D-Day, that was really good. The invasion of Italy, that was really good. But the main reason, the, but the main thing that the United States did during World War II that I think was amazing was lend-lease, okay? Britain was on the lifeline. The USSR was at the brink, but they managed to pull back and a good chunk of it was because of land lease, the United States just giving them the resources they need to actually fight this war. So yeah, he goes into S tier. Our last president to go into S tier, by the way. Harry S. Truman. I like Truman. I think he's a good president, though I do think that he had a lot of problems during his presidency. The Truman Doctrine was stupid. It was inevitable, but it was also kind of stupid. I like the civil rights thing that he did, I don't remember what it's called. Um, I like that. And the biggest thing that he's famous for is the nuking of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That was a very difficult decision that he made. And while it seems harsh to nuke cities, that was what had to be done to end the war as quickly as possible and to end the wasting of lives as quickly as possible. So that was a tough decision for him to make. And I kind of respect him for making it. Also, he called Oppenheimer a crybaby scientist, which is really funny. So yeah, B tier, a good president, but a flawed one. 
Dwayne D. Eisenhower. I really like Eisenhower. Uh, he did a lot of good things. He ended the Korean War, kind of. It's a little complicated. He founded NASA. That was pretty good. But the main thing that I like about Eisenhower is that he did the one thing that makes any leader in all of history great. He built roads! Alright, I cannot emphasize to you how much I love the interstate highway, okay? Before the interstate, it took an arm and a light to get anywhere around in this country. But after the interstate, I mean, I mean, just look at this map. You can get anywhere so easily. It's so good. A tier. Speaking of A tier presidents, John F. Kennedy. Okay, I like JFK, alright? He was only president for two years. However, he did a lot during those two years. He pushed for civil rights, although he didn't sign the bill. He didn't live long enough to do that. He started the space race, which is which is very good. It eventually led to the moon landing, which I feel is one of the biggest achievements mankind has ever done. Probably the biggest achievement of mankind. However, the main reason why I really respect JFK is for his handling of the Cuban Missile Crisis, okay? This was probably the closest the world ever had to the apocalypse. And if less competent men were in charge of the world leaders at the time, face it, we probably would all be dead to by today, alright? So I'm gonna have to give him A tier because I like not being dead. But then he was assassinated and replaced by his vice president, ah! Lyndon B. Johnson. Eh, I don't really like Johnson all that much. Uh, he signed off of civil rights, which I think was very good. However, that was mostly JFK's doing. He's just the guy that finished it. But the main reason why I don't like him is because of the Vietnam War, okay? I'm sorry, alright? I don't like the Vietnam War. It was unnecessary. It costed a lot, thousands of American lives. And it failed. It was a failure in the end. It should have been an example of what not to do in a foreign conflict, in a foreign interventionist conflict. A lesson that the United States is still to this day to learn. I know I'm getting political again, but I'm sorry, I really don't like Wilsonianism. He's okay, but the Vietnam War brings him down a lot, so D tier. I'm sorry, Johnson. Alright, you're not a bad dude, you just did a really stupid war. Alright, ho <laughs> ho Richard Milhouse Nixon, okay? This is probably gonna be my most controversial pick, well, other than Andrew Jackson. I like Nixon, okay? I really like Nixon, but what about Watergate? Look, 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 tell me one politician that hasn't done something scummy, okay? Alright, I like Nixon, I like that he opened up relations with China, I like the environmental thing or whatever that he did. Uh, I like that he's a scumbag piece of garbage human being, okay? I like- I like- I like his policies, but I do think he's a really bad person, which I like. I like historical figures that have personality, especially as a cartoonist, okay? He's one of the f most fun presidents to draw. Look- look up some old caricatures of him, okay? They're- they're really great. However, there's one thing that Nixon did that I really, really don't like. And that was the war on drugs, okay? The war on drugs was stupid. It was stupid, stupid, stupid. It ruined the lives of hundreds of people. Stupid, and the fact that the government, US government decided to continue with the program is stupid, okay? That's the one thing that brings them down in my books. And also the fact, and also Watergate, but who cares about that? B tier. I'm Gerald Ford, and you're not. Gerald Ford. Other than that hilariously out of context clip, he's fine. He's fine. He, he was only president for two years and didn't do anything. Like, the most memorable part of his presidency is that time he fell down Air Force One. That is very funny. Other than that, he's just kind of forgettable. C tier. Alright, Jimmy Carter. Alright, I might be a little bit biased here because he is from my home state. However, his presidency... Look, he's a nice guy. Like, I like him as a person. However, he was not ready for the absolute garbage that he had to deal with during his presidency, okay? The Iranian hostage crisis and the oil crisis, okay? Those two things basically killed his presidency right there. So, while he's a nice guy, he was not the man for the job of such a hectic era in US politics. So, C tier. However, I do have to give him credit for one th big thing. He's the man responsible for the greatest American national monument of all time, the giant nut! That's a nice nut. Oh boy, Ronald Reagan, okay. Um, I'm gonna try to be as politically unbiased as I can here because Reagan is one of those people that you absolutely love or you absolutely despise, okay? Um, so I'm gonna try to be as politically unbiased here because a lot of his policies still apply to American politics to this day. So I'm gonna keep this brief. I'm just, I'm just gonna say this. The economy was good during his presidency. I do think Reaganomics 
um, were okay. Like, trickle-down economics was, was kind of stupid, but not the stupidest thing the United States have, has ever done to its economy. I think increasing military spending was okay. Like, increasing nuclear weapons was also okay. Like, a lot of people hate him for that, but like, the Soviets were being kind of a jerk at the time. It was necessary. And his bromance with Gorbachev was very cute. So, uh, B tier. George H. W. Bush, not the son, the father. He is, um, it's fine. He's kind of forgettable. The Gulf War was a big success, so I'll give him credit for that, but overall, just kind of forgettable president, B tier. And finally, the last president we'll be talking about today, William J. Clinton. Okay, Clinton, first of all, the affair, the whole thing with Monica, that is very funny, okay? That is the, one of the funniest things that has, one of the funniest things that has ever happened in modern American history, okay? Other than that, the economy was good. The 90s itself were just a good time to be an American, so he kind of just rolled off of that. Um, what else did he do? Oh, intervening in the Yugoslav Wars, I think was a very good idea. It was, a, it was one of the few examples of Teddy-style carry a big stick foreign policy in modern U.S. history, but the U.S. got in, helped out the countries declaring independence from Yugoslavia, and then got out, um, which I think was good, because those wars are a mess. So, B tier. And I already mentioned we're not going to be doing the more recent presidents, because I don't want, I don't like politics very much. So yeah, this is the tier list. Looking at it, it's okay. It's fine. I think it's decently balanced. Feel free to rip it apart in the comments, though. Okay, bye! We are